Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial. And in our continuing look at Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, let's keep taking a look at our settings. And we're moving on down, and we're actually going to get into digitizing now. We're going to talk a little bit about the digitizing setting, and we're going to get into the capture tool and take a look at exactly how you're going to digitize material into Media Composer. Now, obviously, getting material into Media Composer can come in many ways. There's actually three main ways that we're going to get material into Media Composer. One is obviously capturing. The second one is obviously importing. And last but certainly not least, we're going to take a look at a great new feature inside of Media Composer, not new to Media Composer 6, but still a newer feature from version 5 called AMA Link 2. I'm going to show you how AMA Link 2 works and why you're going to want to use it in certain situations. Okay, short introduction. Let's just get into Symphony and let's start working. Okay, so let's Alt-Tab or Command-Tab for all of my Mac friends out there into Symphony. And you'll see I just have my standard project set up here. And let's just head on back to the settings because you'll remember in our last lesson we talked about bins and bin settings. And you'll see next we're going to be talking about capturing. Now before I actually get in and talk about the capturing settings, I think what I'm going to do is get into the digitize tool and show you how that works so you'll become familiar with it because obviously digitizing probably one of the most important things other than editing inside of Media Composer or Symphony. Now to get to the capture tool, one of two ways that we can get there. We can simply navigate up to tools and we can come right down here to capture or you'll see the shortcut on Windows, Control and 7, Command and 7 for all of my Mac friends out there. So since I'm a big fan of shortcuts, let's just hit Control and 7 on the keyboard to call up the capture tool. What I'm going to do is just move the capture tool over here, and let's talk about what exactly is going on inside of the capture tool. Now you'll see up at the top we have some buttons. The very first button, fairly self-explanatory, this is the capture button. This is the button you're going to press when you want to capture your media. Now right beside it, the trash can obviously a button you're going to hit when you want to cancel your digitizing. Now the next button over you'll see looks like a little hard drive and it says cap right above it. Well, what this button basically is, is it is a toggle that's going to let us toggle between capture mode, which is what we're in right now, and logging mode. So if you want to get in and log a whole bunch of shots on a tape first, this is how you're going to do it. You're going to switch over to logging mode, you're going to get in, mark your in and out points, which I'll show you how to do in just a second, then you can switch over and you can batch capture everything into Media Composer or Symphony. What I'm going to do is just switch back here to capture mode. You'll see next we have the icon of a little VTR. Now what exactly does this do? Well this toggles between machine control and free mode. You'll see as soon as I switch off source mode or machine mode what happens is down here at the bottom of the window you'll see I now have rolling time code. Now what does that time code represent? Well, that time code represents the current time right now. It's giving me time of day time code. So if I was digitizing from a source, let's say VHS or maybe even a DVD that doesn't have time code or something that I can actually control, this is how I can get in and digitize with it. What I'd basically do is just get to the point that I want in the tape, simply navigate right up to the top and hit the record button, and I'd start doing a free record. What I'm going to do is just navigate right back up here. I'm just going to click on toggle source to switch back into deck control mode. And let's talk about the last button up here at the top. You'll see it looks like a little speaker, and it's simply to open the audio tool. Now, you'll see we have a button there to open the audio tool. Now, the audio tool, again, we always want to access it via the shortcut, Control and 1 on Windows, Command and 1 for all of my Mac friends out there, does the exact same job. Now, you'll see right now, I'm just actually going to skip over my V1 and V2. I'm just going to come right down to Video and Audio. You'll see right now on the system that I'm currently working on, this is an HP Z820. Right now, I don't have a capture card in here, but I do have FireWire ports that I can digitize from. And you'll see that Media Composer recognizes that right away and is telling me, well, guess what? If you want to digitize, you're going to digitize from the host 1394 or the FireWire port on the computer. Now, based on that, Media Composer also knows that I only have access to three channels, a video and two audio channels. Now, you'll see as soon as I turn them on, since I don't have a signal coming in, Symphony also says to me, well, hold on a second, there is no input signal coming to Media Composer right now. So what it does is it says, say OK, and then it just turns those channels off. So obviously, if I had a signal coming in, I'd be able to access it and be able to start digitizing. Now, you'll see, last but certainly not least, I can also digitize with time code over here. So technically, we have four channels coming in, a video channel, two audio channels, and timecode if I want it. Now, what I always tell people is always digitize timecode whether you think you need it or not. Always a good thing to have. 
Okay, so let's move on a little bit. Let's actually move down, right down here. What I'm going to do is just twirl everything down here. You'll see, as I twirl down this section, this is where we can get into stereoscopic options inside of the capture tool. Now, we're going to talk more about stereoscopic editing in a later tutorial. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to twirl that back up for a second. You'll see next I can get in and I can name the clip that I happen to be digitizing and I can add a comment. And I think what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to come back to my bins. I'm just going to create a new bin here. We'll just call this uh, capture bin, just like that. And what I'll do is just move the capture tool over here like such. And I think what we'll do is we'll actually get in and we'll log a clip because I want to show you how this is going to work. But before I do that, let's actually just move on because I want to talk about the next section because this is probably the most important section of the capture tool other than actually selecting what tracks you want to digitize. You'll see, as soon as I created that bin, I now have the option of what bin do I want to digitize to. In this case, because I only have one bin open, the capture bin is my only option. Next, you'll see that I can choose what resolution do I want to capture. Now, because of the way I have the project set up, HDV 720p MXF is my only option. Now, depending on what type of capture card you have in your system, this is going to vary greatly based on that fact. So you'll see in this case, like I said, HD 720p MXF is my choice. And right now you'll see the data drive, the D drive, is where everything is set to go to. Now I have two options here. I have the data drive and I have data drive number one. Now I'm going to talk about another setting here even before I talk about the capture settings. And it's an important one, especially when you're digitizing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to head back over to the settings. I'm going to click on the settings button and we're going to navigate all the way down to the M section, M for media creation. What I'm going to do is double click on media creation and what this basically is, is this is a way to tell Media Composer where we want to send things. You'll see the very first window, drive filtering and indexing. The two most important options on this screen is I don't want to digitize to the system drive, so I want to filter that out and I don't want to capture to the launch drive. So what I'm going to do is select both of those. You'll see the next option we have is capture. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to tell Media Composer or Symphony that whatever we digitize, we always want to digitize a specific resolution to a specific drive. You'll see right now the data drive, the D drive, is the emptiest drive I have. How do I know that? because it's the one that's bolded. But I could really select whichever drive I wanted. Let's say I wanted to select hypothetically the E drive. What I could do now is simply come through and you'll see that if I switch to titles, data drive is still selected. Import, data drive is still selected, but I don't want that. I want the E drive. So what I'm going to do is simply just say apply to all and you'll see now that it's switched for everything. Now I should also point out here, I'll just come back to capture for one second, that you do in here have the option of splitting up video and audio. I don't recommend doing that. Have everything go to one location. Now you'll see I did that within the media creation settings. What I'm going to do is simply say OK, but you'll see if I come back up, I can actually do that from inside the capture window as well. Now you're also going to notice that as soon as I come back in, the data drive is grayed out. Now why would that be? Well, the reason that it's grayed out is because right now, I don't have video or audio selected, but you'll see if I turn it back on quickly here, I'm just going to move my no input signal present dialog box up a little bit because I want you to see that with video, two audio tracks, and time code selected on that data drive one, I can actually record for 165 hours, 42 minutes, and 29 seconds. You'll see a very, very long time. What I'm going to do is just say OK because that's OK for it to reset itself. Obviously, if I wanted to see how much I had on the D drive, what I can do is just switch back. I'm just going to turn on Video 1, Audio 1, and Audio 2. And you'll see on this drive, I have 233 hours of storage space. You can see quite a lot of space. What I'll do is just say OK so it can reset itself. Now, let's move down. You'll see in the next section, I can get in and add an audio delay if I wanted to. And I can even get in and preserve Vericam frames. Now, last section, fairly self-explanatory. This is the transport controls. Transport controls meaning this is how I'm going to control whatever deck I happen to be working with. Now, you'll remember if I came up and toggle the source, that's actually going to disappear because in this case, I'm doing what's called free capturing. I don't have a deck that I'm going to be controlling. I'm just going to switch that back for a second. You'll see as soon as I switch back, I obviously get my transport controls back. What I also have access to right now is the ability to add an in point, an out point, once I add those, I'll know what the duration is, and I can even get in and add locators if I wanted to, so that when my footage is captured, maybe I want to get in and say, oh, okay, you know, this was something important that happened, so let's add a locator in there. We can also actually do that on the fly while we capture, as long as you have locator mapped to something on your keyboard. 
Now you'll see that we have two other options in here, one that says no deck and the other one that says tape name. Now, no deck, if we drop this down, let's just say hypothetically I plugged in right now an HDV camera. The problem is, is that as soon as I plug in that camera, Media Composer is not going to see it right away. I actually need to tell it that something new is there. And the one that I use all the time of the three options that we have is to simply auto configure. What Media Composer is going to do is it's going to pull the deck, figure out what type of deck it is, it's going to send that information back to Media Composer or Symphony, and it's going to set up the capture tool the way that I need so that I can simply get in and hit play and start watching whatever's on that camera. Now, last but certainly not least, what I always encourage people to do, very, very important, name your tapes. And how you do that is very simple. You just come down, you click on name tape. It's going to say, well, hold on a second. Right now, there's nothing in the deck. I don't even see a deck there. Are you sure you want to associate a tape with this? For right now, I'm just going to say yes. What I'm going to do is just call this tape 001, just for argument's sake. What I'm going to do is simply say, okay, and you'll see now that right down here, this tape, even though I don't really have one, has been flagged as being tape 001. So anything that's logged or captured right now is going to be tagged with that tape number. Now, there's obviously ways to get in and change that. So why don't we actually take a look at a situation where you'd want to do something like that right now. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to close the capture tool and I'm going to come back to my bins and I'm going to hit Control and O on Windows, Command and O for all my Mac friends out there. I'm going to come back here and I'm going to come to the stock footage folder and I'm just going to open the boxing stock footage. Now I'm going to double click on a clip here. You can see that I have a boxer here. Now I know this is from Digital Juice's Video Tracks HD. Now the only problem is that if I stretch this out here and what I should have done here because I actually created a new project since the last tutorial I did is I should have got in and actually created my bin settings. So why don't I just do that quickly here just as a bit of a refresher here. I'm just going to delete all these bin views. Let's just come in here to our little hamburger. We're going to come up to choose columns, select everything, select nothing. We're going to come down. We're going to want to select drive, duration, end. Come all the way down. We're going to choose start and we're going to choose tape. And I'm going to say OK. Now you're going to see that the drive obviously associated with where these are imported to. I'm just going to delete this sequence here because I don't need this as part of what we're doing here because I haven't actually edited this into anything. So we'll just delete that. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to associate a tape with this clip because the problem is, is that if I delete this clip, you know, I have a lot of Digital Juice products, I'm not going to know where this came from. So for right now, I'm just going to hypothetically say that I know where it came from. I could obviously go back to the disk, but I'm not going to do that right now. So let's actually associate this clip with a tape name. So what I'm going to do is just figure out which clip this is. So there we go. I just did my F7 and F8, which is match, frame, and find bin. And let's just come in and what I want to do is I want to modify this clip to assign it a tape name. Now this is great if you've digitized something with the wrong tape name. You can actually get in and change it. Or what you can do is give a tape name to any element that you're working with inside a media composer or symphony. And how we do that is very simple. Two ways to get to modify. What I can do is I can navigate up to clip and I can simply navigate down to modify. Or you'll remember when I set up my keyboard, my shortcut for modify is F10. Now we're going to talk a little bit more about the modify settings in a later tutorial, but there's one in here that's important that I want to show you. I'm going to simply click on the drop down and you're going to see right down here, one of my options is set source. It's going to say, okay, well, what tape do you want to associate this with? Now what's going to happen is, is that in this window, it's only going to show me the tapes that I've created inside this project unless I tell it otherwise right here. But what I'm going to do is just say that hypothetically this came from Video Tracks HD Disk 5. I'm going to say OK. It's going to say, are you sure that this is where it came from? I'm going to say OK. It's going to say, are you really sure? Are you really, really sure? I'm going to say OK. And you're going to see now that down here in my bin, let's just move my drive over here a little bit, that this clip has now been flagged as being from Video Tracks HD. So the best part is, is that if this clip ever gets deleted, I know exactly where it came from so I can easily get it back. The other great thing is that there's no way for me to get in and delete this information. I can select it and hit delete and nothing is going to happen. The only way for me to remove this information is to delete this clip and unlink it and then remove the tape information from here by doing what I just did. So this is a great way to get in and super organize your projects even further by assigning a tape name to things, whether they actually came from a tape or not. Maybe it's what CD something came from, you know, stock music or something like that. Or in this case, where did this stock element come from? Let's say it came from Artbeats. I could get in and say this was from Artbeats 
website whatever page three icon five you know that's a perfect example of how to get in and you know trace things right back to where they came from okay so we're just scratching the surface of getting footage into media composer so what i'm going to do is i'm going to wrap this tutorial up here and when we come back in our next tutorial we're actually going to take a look at the capture settings and you're going to see all the different options that you have from inside of that window so if you have any questions you have any comments or you have any tutorial requests you can send them to kevin p mcauliffe at gmail.com this has been kevin p mcauliffe thanks a lot for watching